a sarcastic sound today, this sermon of what we have from the scripture is called it, Happy are those who mourn. Happy are those who mourn. Yes, we have been shaped by this war and squeezing into his mold in terms of music, morals, marriage, divorce, liberation movements, materialist diet, uh, alcohol, dance, business, ethics, dress, entertainment, and all kinds of things. But God wants us to be different and to live different. God wants us to be happy. God wants us to give us the principle that we can be happy. So these Beatitudes are attitudes for us to be, to be happy, not try to, to pursue happiness. Many people in this world, they are pursuing love, they're pursuing happiness, they're pursuing peace. But we are not pursuing peace, love, and happiness. We are happy. We are in love. And we know who is love. And therefore, we, we are peacemakers. As I said last week, when Ravi Zacharias, he was doing his conference this year, 2016, to many Jews in America, call it Passion 2016. He says, the traditionalists live for the past. The existentialists live for the moment. And the utopians live for tomorrow. In this time when Jesus was in this world teaching this and giving us this beatitude, there were people who were looking for happiness. Jesus was teaching these Beatitudes when they have people like today looking for happiness. There were zealots who they were looking for happiness as they went against power. The Sadducees, they were looking for happiness as they went ahead everything that they have in this world because they don't believe in the resurrection, they don't believe in the, in the eternal life. And the Pharisees, they, went, they tried to win back, always looking for happiness. Since the time they were cast or taken out from, from Egypt, they always tried to go back, go back to Egypt, go back to the desert, go back to the tradition, go back to the law, go back, go back, go back, go back. And they thought that if they finally get bad, they can be happy. But Jesus today in this teaching, he is calling us to be happy, not by going against or going ahead or going bad, but by going up going up because God and everything that comes from God come from above. You don't live your, for yourself. You don't live for today and you don't live for a cause. You live for God. You live because of His grace. And because of His grace, you are here and thus make you happy. God wants you to be happy because God is happy. Today, the scripture said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. All these Beatitudes are paradoxical. But the most paradoxical of these Beatitudes is this one. Happy are those who mourn. It doesn't make sense. It's like somebody, someone saying, okay, happy are the sad. Or like someone say, rich are the poor. Or healthy are the, are the sick. Thing or the fat. So does it make sense? It, it, it doesn't concord with the reality. The word for blessed is makarios in Greek. But the word for mourn or mourning in Greek is pentheo. That means grief when someone dies, means also lament. But in this context, it's not talking about mourning for someone who died or lament for someone who died, but it's mourning over sin. That's the meaning of this word, pentheo. Because godly sorrow produces repent. Jesus came to this world to conform all who mourns. Actually, it was prophesied by Isaiah in his book, chapter 6, 61, verse 2. Isaiah said that Jesus came to proclaim the year of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, at the day of vengeance of our God to conform all who mourn. God doesn't expect us to be always happy and He doesn't expect that all the time we can have this smile on our face because He knows that we are in this world full of sin struggling with everyday issues. So if someone say that, okay, 
you, you're supposed to be happy people while you are not happy all the time. While you Christians are not with this joy all the time in your face. God doesn't want us to be all the time just sarcastically laughing at everything. When he talk about to be happy is because we will be comforted as we mourn, as we lament, as we are sad for our sins, for the sins of this world, for the sinfulness of this life, this generation. And you know that if we mourn, that helps us. If you try to contain your, your mourn or you try to hide your, your grief, you are getting sick and sicker and sicker. Like many comedians, as we just see, they try to hide their sadness as they smile, laugh, and make other people laugh. Actually, when we mourn for our sins, then we can recover our health. Psalms 32, verse 1 to 5, the Bible said that, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man who sing the Lord does not count against him, and in whose spirit is not deceived. When I keep silent, it was David who was talking, my bones waste away through, through my groaning, groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was set out in the heat of summer. Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. In other words, when David, he covered his sin, or he hide his sin, and he did more about his sin, he get older, and he get sick. What was the sick of David? He was, once again, once in his life, a murderer, a liar and commit adultery. He slept with, with one of his soldier's wife. So he committed adultery. And he tried to cover his sins, killing this wife's husband, his, one of his soldiers. And he lied about it, and he bring this woman back to him, and he have another baby with, with her, and he tried to cover his sin. People say, well, the, the king is okay. There's no sin on him. But in his conscience, he knew that he was a sinner. Now, he didn't lament. He did more for his sin. But when he recognized that he was a sinner, and he recognized that he see, sin is making it sick, then he confessed his transgression. He confessed his sin, and God restored his strength, his health. So grief is essential for, to, for your health. If you try to hide your sins, you are getting sick. You are depressed. You are full of, of stress. You cannot see life like you see when you are without sin, when your sins are forgiven, when you have this joy of the Lord every day in your, in your life. If you keep the sin of yesterday, of the last week, of the last month, of the last year, your every day is like a nightmare. You are still living the night, even though it's already daylight. Blessed are those who mourn, because they will be comforted. The promise of those who our mourning is that they will be comforted. And, and how God comfort us? First, God draw us closer to Him. The Bible said the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in the spirit. Those who are, in other words, poor in the spirit. God grieves with us. As the Bible said in Isaiah 53, Jesus, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. God is familiar with suffering. God is familiar with sorrow. And when Jesus was here on earth, Jesus wept. He wept when Lazarus died, and he wept in front of Jerusalem before he was crucified. God gave us a church as a family to support us when we mourn. So the family, the church, us, this ministry here in CEN, is a comfort of God. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn, says the Bible. Now, in this world, people are looking at life as just a competition between life 
I mean, like, a competition between love and that it means happy and sad that is mourning. I found that this very interesting formula. And according to this formula, life plus love equals happy or happiness. Now, other people think that life without love equals sad or sadness. Now, you can have one or these two life. So we have two life that equals happy plus sad. <laughs> Not as it were in mathematics. But if, if life is equal happy plus sad by two life that you can have, then your life is has happy and half sad. And this word say that's the real life. I don't know what you think about this. I know you are good in math. But for some people that makes sense, for some people doesn't make sense. We can have these two life. Be happy, be sad. Be blessed or mourn. And if you are blessed and mourn, then your life, the entire life, your real life, all the days will be mourning and be blessed. Mourning and be blessed. Happy are those who mourn. Now, there were a story that I hear from. That they were a CEO in a small town who tried to give his service for hospitals and schools and, 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 and buildings. He was a janitor. He worked as a janitor. And after he got contracts in many buildings and many uh, hospitals, he recruited employees to work with him. Now, one day he, 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 he hired a young employee. And he gave him the assignment to clean the floor of this hospital. Now, while he went to another floor, another building to clean with other employees, he came back. And as he knew by his experience of, of years of cleaning these buildings, he knew that something was wrong. He asked the new employer, have you done your job? And he said, yes, as you can see, everything is clean, he said. Then this CEO, he said to the new young employee, OK, let's go now put our hands and our fingers on the floor and let's try to check how clean is the floor. Now as they both put their hands on the floor, he asked to this new employer, what is this? And the new employer said, it's dirt. It's dirt. Very good, says the employee. Many people cannot see there. Now you and I, we can work together. Why? Because these buildings, they pay us to clean the dirt of this building. If you cannot see the dirt, then we cannot work together because they pay us to clean the dirt. And so we must see the dirt so we can work together and receive the payment of this. Now, when this young man went back to clean again the floor and the building, so this man remembered that that very morning he had a fight with his wife at home. And then he was hearing the Holy Spirit is talking to him as he was remembered that he fought with his wife. And he had a very big argument and they say very bad words to each other. Now when he was hearing the Holy Spirit, he doesn't have a Bible there, it was no Bible there, but he heard that the Holy Spirit was talking to him and said, what is this? What is this that you have in your mind? What is this that, that, that happened with your wife today in the morning? at your home. The men say this answer, that is sin. That is sin. Well done, said the Holy Spirit. Now we can work together. Because many people cannot see sin in their life. But since you see sin in your life, we can work together. And Jesus already paid for your sins. How many of us can see the dirt of our life? How many of us can see the, the sin in our life? How many of us have recognized that, yes, Jesus paid for our sins? So we must all be washed away with his blood. But we need to work together with the Holy Spirit. We need to work together with God in order to clean our life every day. 
The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, Come near to God, and He will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. These Beatitudes have reference to a spiritual condition. So, they are spiritual activities. But we need to know that we, the conviction of our sinful life is essential. It's an essential preliminary to true conversion. You cannot convert it into a Christian, into a believer, a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, if you don't have conviction first of your sins. It's the Holy Spirit who convinces you that you are a sinner and you need a savior. That you are a sinner and your sins must be clean. You need to work with the Holy Spirit. And how you do that? As you read the Bible, as you pray, as you come to worship God. So you can see His glory, you can see His holiness, you can see His face. We are saved by grace through faith. But we, we cannot meet, we cannot meet grace if we are not poor in the Spirit. If we are not put in the Spirit, we cannot receive grace, meet grace, because grace is not a subject, it's not a noun, it's a person. Jesus is full of grace. When you meet grace, then you meet the glory of God. And you can confess, as Isaiah said in his book, in chapter 6, the prophet, when he met God, he claimed, Woe to me, I ring, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among an, a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. When Isaiah saw the glory of God, he confessed, Woe to me! I'm an unclean person. I'm dirty. Now, do you lament for your sins? Do you see your sins and you exclaim like Isaiah, Woo to me! I'm an unclean person. Or are you happy that you are dirty? Are you happy that, yes, your sins are there, covered by your lies, by your style of life that Nobody will notice, but only God knows. But you try to deceive God just to hire you behind the bushes, like Adam and Eve when they were in the middle of the garden. Where are you? Says God. And Adam said, I was naked, so I hide behind the bushes, trying to hide his iniquity from the eyes of God. But God, who is omniscient, omnipresent, he cannot be deceived by our life or the intentions of our heart to hide from his presence. When the Apostle Paul, he saw the sin in his life, he said and confessed, I know that nothing good life in, live in me that is my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do, no, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. It was the Apostle Paul who was saying this. I want to do good, but I'm doing the evil that I don't want to do. And I cannot stop to do this evil, even though I know that I want to do good. I, I should not do evil. But then later he confessed, What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Who will rescue us from our sinfulness, from our dirt? Who will clean us? Imagine that you, you right now, you have a pain for lament, for mourning someone lost. Maybe you already have experience losing some loving one. But I want you to not go to that painful remember or memory. But imagine that if it's you, it is you who will be lament or mourn it. If someone say that 
this is your last day of your life, starting from the year that you were born until today. And they put it in that tomb that you are a person that never, never meet the grace of God. Your tomb will be with your name and in the bottom of that play they say leave it without grace. Would you mourn today for yourself? Would you mourn today for your sins that are not confessed, that are not washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ, that are not under the grace of Christ. The Bible says if you confess your sin, he's able and just to forgive all your sins. And your sins will be forgiven as you are said, Jesus Christ and Lord and your Savior who pay all your sins on the cross, forgiven, past, present, and future. That is the grace of God. You have seen your sins today and die spiritually today and born again today as you ask to, your, to yourself and see the dirt of your heart and your soul. What I have done, what I have said, what I have thought, how I have been behaving with respect to others. And if the Holy Spirit gives you conviction of your sins, then you can ask to God to forgive you if you turn back to Him in repentance. You can still ask yourself, what is make me that to be to behave in that way? Why should I be irritable? Why should I be bad tempered? Why am I not able to control myself? Why do not I do I harbor that unkind, jealous, envious souls? What is in me? What is in me? What is it? But if you, as Apostle Paul, recognize that it is only Jesus and by his grace, through the faith that you exercise today, right now you can be forgiven and have eternal life, then you can today mourn from your sins. The Apostle said to the Corinthians, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings to death. Many people they are today mourning for those who are right now in any hospital passing away, dying for disease, for accidents, or for any other reason. People are mourning for death because they know that they, they, they die and that's over. But we are not mourning for those who are dying now, but we are mourning for ourselves today because we can be dead spiritually today, today or we can be alive today and we can enjoy from today eternal life. Those who die believing in Christ, they know that after this life, they have eternal life in heaven. But those who die without Christ, they know that there's no hope for them. We have hope. That's why godly sorrow brings repentance. And this leads us to salvation. Now we can say, like the Apostle Paul say, that you, even though you die today, you can give sense to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can give sense to God. Because even though you were struggling, you were wrestling with this sinful nature in you, you can still confess that Jesus is your Savior, Jesus is your Lord, and He is with you right now. But it doesn't, mean, doesn't end in this. doesn't mean here. When Jesus, He was ready to be crucified, He was in very big anguish, and He prayed more earnestly, and His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. According to Luke chapter 22, when He rose, from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them, get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Jesus mourned, not for his sin, but he, saw, he mourned for the sins of the world. He suffered, he, he was there sweet in blood because of the sin of this world. He was mourning, he was lamenting. Not that he's gonna die on the cross, but he's dying for a war that will not accept him. A war that will reject his salvation. 
A Christian person is a man who mourns also for the sins of others. He doesn't stop in himself. He sees the same sin in other people. He's about to mourn for the state of society, the state of the world. As he reads the newspaper, he does not stop at what he sees and, or simply express disgust at it. The Christian person mourns because this war is in sin. This war is unhappy. This war is suffering for the stinfer and the sadness of death. There is no morning without night. There is no love without tears. There is no joy without pain. There is no Easter without cross. And there is no blessing without mourning. We are blessed if we mourn for our sins. We are happy if we mourn for our sins. And we are happy as we know that we have a Redeemer. We have a, for a person who saves us, who forgives all our sins. So we can say like David say, restore to me the joy of your salvation. One day we won't need to mourn anymore because God promises us in heaven when we get there. He will weep every tear from their eyes. They will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the all other sins have passed away. And God will be with us forever. God will receive us eternally in His kingdom. Now today, who are here proclaiming, let your kingdom come. Let's ask to the Lord to clean all our sins and to give us this lament, this sadness, this sorrow for the sins that we have today in us. Not just be content that we have the promise of heaven, but to purify ourselves every day as we experience and meet grace here in earth, here in CN, here in this church, here in this time of history. Because grace is still available. We can be saved by grace. It only needs your faith to believe. As you confess your sins, God is able to forgive all your sins. And you can accept His love, His sacrifice, and have eternal life. Let us pray.